Now we're going to move to um, the final keynote speaker of today. Um, it's uh, Dr. Uh, Tarin Toledo. Uh, she's a researcher at the Instituto de Ecologia AC in Mexico. Uh, she coordinated a national scale initiative to develop diagnosis of cloud forests in Mexico. She was uh, distinguished by the Rainforest Alliance as a Klein Hans Fellow and is currently a National Geographic Explorer. So uh, please take it away, Dr. Toledo. I thank you very much, Paul. I will try to, sorry, I forgot how to share. First, I have to share my screen. <laughs> there it is. So please tell me if you can see my presentation. I think so, an island in the, in the sea. Mm, there it is. Well, we I am, can you see? Yes. Yes. So thank you very much, everybody, for, for first for the invitation, for being here and listening. Uh, I will talk today about uh, natural forest regeneration or secondary forests because the focus of conservation is usually on all growth forests, but we also need to conserve, restore, and promote the sustainable management of secondary forests. So, Following deforestation and land use abandonment due to human migration or the loss of agricultural productivity, new forest cover can emerge as a result of natural regeneration. And this regrowth type is known as a secondary forest, passive restoration or second growth. And to me, it also makes me think about like a second hope, a second opportunity and as you can see in these photos in the tropics, the recovery of forest cover can be very fast. And this process of secondary succession is widely extended in the planet. In the last 30 years, there has been dramatic changes in the tree cover. A recent global scale analysis of satellite data revealed tree cover gain attributed uh, to to natural regeneration and, and of course as well to the establishment of tree plantations uh, being very important in mountain areas. And at present, secondary forests are the major components in tropical landscapes, covering more area than, than all growth forests. So these young forests are vital as habitat for biodiversity. They can capture carbon at a fast rate their cover reduces the impact of the rains on the soil, reducing erosion. They contribute to the regulation of the hydrological cycle, act as corridors in the landscape for wild fauna, and they also provide scenery value. And uh, thanks to the great work of uh, Robin Chasdon, Manuel Bariguata, Brian Finnegan, Miguel Martinez Ramos, Franz Bongers, Mitchell Aid and many other colleagues, we now know that secondary forests are very dynamic and high variation occurs both temporally and spatially in the rates of forest recovery. So several studies support uh, the following patterns. The recovery of richness can be very fast, in some cases in less than two decades, but the composition takes much longer to recover. Uh, the rate of recovery varies depending on the functional group or taxa we study. For example, forest specialist species of amphibians can take much longer to recover than more uh, generalist species. And the rates of recovery vary widely from site to site. So in that regard, uh, it's very important that the recovery is affected by the landscape metrics. Greater recovery occurs in areas where all growth fragments are present and closer to open areas. And in Neotropical America, the forested landscapes commonly have increasingly small forest patches immersed in an agricultural matrix, which reduces the, the, the capacity to recover in these open areas. And uh, the recovery is also affected by the socio-ecological landscape. Social aspects that affect the recovery include, for example, that early stages of natural regeneration on farms 
can give the impression that land is being abandoned or neglected, which can instead promote uh, invasion by people without land. So uh, given their importance of secondary forests, we want to maintain and promote the recovery, but uh, how can we do it? So uh, in order to attempt to disaggregate a secondary forest, I, I will focus in the particular case of tropical mountain cloud forest, because these forests are recognized as a priority for conservation, restoration, and I want to emphasize the importance of management uh, for uh, timber production and also the provision of other ecosystem services, which has been overseen for these forests. So what is special about cloud forest? Um, the main characteristic of this vegetation type is that uh, these communities develop in the mountains in those areas where the clouds or fog cover the vegetation frequently along the year. So these conditions of high humidity are absolutely necessary for their existence. And given the, the, that they can develop only under these particular climatic conditions, these, these forests are rare, they account to approximately one to 8% of tropical forest worldwide. And despite the reduced area, they characteristically host uh, exceptional levels of biodiversity with very high levels of endemisms. Just to give you a figure, in Mexico, approximately 2,300 plant species uh, of cloud forest are endemic. They also play an important role in the regulation of the hydrological cycles in the watersheds. And another characteristic of this forest is that the, the high humidity conditions are ideal for the prolific growth of epiphytic plants, which are important components uh, contributing to the high diversity and also to the biomass and nutrient cycling. These forests are a source of timber and non-timber forest products Many of the forest resources play an important uh, part of the local culture, the identity, ceremonies and spiritual life of the communities inhabiting in these areas, like the inflorescences of the epiphytic bromeliads, which are um, popularly used to create floral arches around Mexico and also in other Latin American countries. So these uh, conditions of humidity uh, in this forest also create conditions for saturated and acidic soils and the presence of clouds uh, reduce the temperature and also uh, the, they present low evapotranspiration rates and, and overall low productivity in comparison with other tropical ecosystems. And uh, the trees characteristically are, are twisted so uh, given these characteristics, they have been forgotten from silviculture. However, the people inhabiting in the areas of distribution of cloud forests continuously extract timber and non-timber forest products without planification, causing further degradation. So as a result of a habitat loss and over-harvesting, uh, about 60% of three species of cloud forest are in a category of threat according to the red list of Mexican cloud forest trees. Um, in Mexico, the, the original cover of cloud forest was estimated to be approximately 1% of the territory. The green areas in the map represent the, the cloud forest distribution in the country. And um, cloud forest loss has continue unabated to the present. However, as in other tropical regions, cloud forest landscapes in Mexico are dominated by secondary forests. According to the most recent analysis, secondary forests um, account for more than half of the extent of cloud forest uh, cover at present. So we want to maintain and promote the recovery of secondary cloud forest. 
but in the complex reality of, of human modified landscapes, there are so many components that influence the destiny of these systems. So today I will uh, synthesize an analysis in which I will first describe uh, the main um, constraints or barriers uh, identified for the management of secondary cloud forest uh, in, in Mexico or focused in Mexico, a uh, group in three components, the environmental and silvicultural, socioeconomic and regulatory. Uh, then I will discuss uh, some policies and strategies proposed to overcome the main constraints and uh, finally, I will mention the most uh, important uh, benefits in the environmental and socioeconomic aspects. And uh, this analysis is the result of the revision of literature and also very importantly, the opinions of colleagues and forest management managers and, and forest owners who uh, these opinions were gathered during a workshop organized in Mexico two years ago. So uh, in the environmental and silvicultural constraints, uh, although diversity in secondary cloud forest is reduced in relation to mature forest, high tree species richness can occur in early successional stands. These forests uh, characteristically are very heterogeneous with a high variation in species composition among sites and a very high beta diversity and high endemicity. And added to this, uh, there is wide variation in the recovery processes of secondary cloud forest um, via natural regeneration as a result of the influence of uh, various factors, including the time elapsing since um, land abandonment or since secondary succession, the previous land use history, the elevation, the area of forest cover in the landscape. And, um, an important component of the complexity of secondary cloud forest management lies in their intrinsic dynamics because while they are dominated by pioneer species, shade tolerant species can also be present and increase in dominance with forest age. So since stands are diverse with trees varying in growth rates and requirements for regeneration, traditional silvicultural systems with one cutting cycle for all timber species cannot be simultaneously optimum for both slow and fast growing species. Um, also, another, another limitation is that there are limited studies about the impact of silvicultural treatments on secondary cloud forest productivity. Most of the available information regarding silvicultures in the neotropics is derived from research projects uh, conducted in tropical mountain forest in Costa Rica and Ecuador. And uh, we lack information about the effects of logging on water, soils, nutrient cycles, and biodiversity. In the socioeconomic uh, realm, um, secondary cloud forests are constituted frequently by small uh, fragments and costs of management and legal logging are harder to address by small holders who lack experience in forest management. And in these cases, there are no collective rules, reinforcing restrictions, promoting protection and, and harvest uh, practices as they do exist in larger collectively owned uh, properties in Mexico that are engaged in silvicultural practices. And also uh, the cost of transaction are high for timber production uh, because the Mexican forest law demands forest producers to perform forest inventories, forest management plans, and to obtain yearly logging permits, which increase management costs. And, and they have to compete with, uh, with timber from illegal sources. And illegal logging in Mexico uh, accounts for at least 50% of the country uh, timber production. Um, these forests, uh, as, as I mentioned, they have low, lower timber volumes than mature forest or than other uh, um, types of ecosystems like pine forest. And um, 
Also, most of the tree species from secondary cloud forest attain lower market prices than Pinus patula, one of the most popular uh, species for forestation in humid montane forests in, in Latin America. Um, another important constraint is that the ecosystem services, such as carbon sequestration, hydrological services, and soil protection, are uh, poorly economically valued. Uh, both by markets and by public policies. Um, the payment for environmental services approach, for example, in Mexico is focused only on conservation goals, not on sustainable management. And the payments are much lower than the estimated opportunity cost of cloud forest transformation into coffee or sugarcane uh, crops, for example. Um, in terms of the regulatory aspects, uh, existing policy and, and laws uh, disregard the conditions and the needs of secondary cloud forest management and use. Uh, in general, the opportunities for small scale forest users to improve their livelihoods by harvesting timber and non-timber forest products are very limited. Uh, by the lack of a supportive legal framework, as it happens also uh, in other Latin American countries. Um, also very importantly, contradictory policies among government sectors regarding natural forest regeneration uh, disincentive the protection and the management of these systems. Uh, for example, as part of reforestation programs, uh, forest owners are indirectly subsidized to the forest areas covered by secondary cloud forest and plant pines instead. And this trend has further increased with the program that is uh, at place in Mexico uh, with a new government called Sembrando Vida, whose subsidies to reforestation with fruit trees has a budget 21 times bigger than the assigned to any forest management program. Um, now, it sounds, it sounds maybe overwhelming, but I'm very glad to, to tell you that, that we are making progress. Uh, for example, uh, just last year, the category of secondary forest was included in the legislation because before secondary forest concept, it was not uh, included. And, and it was not recognized. So the owners of secondary forests had to follow all the procedures and the requirements uh, for a mature forest. If they wanted to incorporate their land into legal harvesting procedure at a high expense. And while this is uh, a step forward, we still uh, need uh, uh, to incorporate more information and criteria in order to to incorporate it in, into other law instruments that are uh, important in terms of their um, application in the, in the field. Uh, also, we have had um, extraordinary policies uh, that have proved to be uh, successful. For example, uh, PROSIMAV in the year 2000 in Mexico uh, proved that advisory and public investment on local training um, governance capacities, uh, small local industries, and diversification of forest users are critical uh, strategies for forest conservation and sustainable use in the states of Oaxaca, Guerrero, Michoacán, and Durango. And this type of program needs or should be reinforced and scale up and include small holders. Um, it's also a uh, the involvement of local communities is of uttermost importance because in Mexico about 60% of tropical mountain cloud forest is under communal ownership. So in this uh, context, community managed forest in Mexico have a key role to play in maintaining sustainable landscapes. And uh, due to the intrinsic, uh, highly dynamic and heterogeneity, of secondary cloud forest structure and composition and the important socioeconomic variation that exists among uh, regions in Mexico. Uh, legal uh, requirements for use and management should be flexible to allow adjustments to regional conditions and changes 
So due to the small uh, forest fragment size and the low commercial timber value uh, volumes, uh, management plans must be adjusted to the site specific conditions rather than to rigid national established schemes. Um, also, uh, the development of markets for ecotourism and non-timber forest products have proved to be important uh, complements of local forest economies. And uh, the, the, um, to enable the integration of multiple objectives, strengthening the dialogue among uh, multiple stakeholders is absolutely crucial. Um, so in order to support the management and the use of secondary cloud forest, uh, we need uh, future research in the following aspects. Uh, the impact of different intensities and types of logging on water nutrient cycles and biodiversity. Uh, resilience, uh, for example, evaluations of the time required for forests to recover before a new cycle uh, can commence. Uh, also, uh, we need information about species specific recruitment and growth rates in response to logging and tending operations. Uh, experimental trials would be necessary to develop silvicultural tools and to show which intervention intensities and frequencies would most effectively foster valuable species without uh, major disturbances to the ecosystem uh, functions and um, efficiency of restoration with productive goals, for example, enrichment plantings or invasive species control, which uh, are important in this, in, in this type of forests. Uh, we need economic analysis of timber harvesting. For example, efforts can be made to promote the establishment and growth of species of higher uh, potential, like those with high growth rates and good timber quality which could contribute to increase revenues, but uh, we need to, to know which is the cost benefit uh, balance of such interventions. And finally, but very um, priority is that, that uh, we need socio-ecological research in collaboration with local communities to design multiple use uh, landscapes that integrate the, the diversity of secondary cloud forests. Now, um, considering that tropical mountain areas are vulnerable to erosion and landslides because they usually are established or developed in, in areas with high slope, the protective function of secondary cloud forest uh, for soils and the role in the hydrological cycle, uh, maintaining a permanent or continuous forest cover and forest structure is paramount. So the polycyclic selection system uh, could allow the maintenance of a continuous tree cover which protects uh, for the soils from erosion and nutrient loss and contribute to hydrological regulation and can act as, as corridors in the landscape and provide habitat for various species. And uh, this selective logging could be complemented by the maintenance of mature forest areas without felling that allow the recruitment of affected taxa and function as seed sources of late successional species. Um, in terms of the socioeconomic benefits, uh, sustainable sources of, of not only timber but firewood are very necessary given their role in the, in the energy provision to local communities with approximately 25 million people depending on fuel wood in Mexico. Two minutes, Turin. Thank you. Thank you, Paul. And diversification of land use, which integrates selective logging in secondary cloud forest with plantations with alnus acuminata in degraded lands and agricultural land use has been identified as economically feasible for the long-term management of small farms of about 30 hectares in Andean Ecuador by uh, Noque. So there is potential. So just to wrap up, uh, secondary cloud forests are of great strategic value for sustainable development goals due to their outstanding biodiversity and role in hydrological regulation. They could contribute via selective logging to the continued provision of timber and firewood 
an important energy source for local populations while maintaining a permanent forest cover. Uh, contradictory policies among government sectors regarding natural forest regeneration areas and the excessive legal requirements imposed to forest management disincentive their protection and management. Uh, we lack information on how selective logging can contribute to income while supporting biodiversity and protecting nutrient and uh, water fluxes. And uh, due to the characteristic small uh, forest fragment size and low timber volumes, subsidies are necessary to promote their use and management. So in this aspect, a quantitative assessment of secondary cloud forest contribution to the provision of timber and non-timber forest products, an analysis of the opportunity costs of timber production in comparison to land use change and payments for ecosystem services could help to derive adequate compensatory mechanisms. And uh, Finally, I would like to recognize all the ideas exchanged with many colleagues who share their experience and knowledge. And while they are not responsible for all the ideas presented here, their input has been uh, absolutely central for, for what I have just presented. So thank you very much to all of you for your attention. And I will stop sharing now. Thank you, Dr. Toledo, for a really nice presentation um, about the cloud forests in Mexico. Uh, Lisa, do you have questions queued up? If not, I have a couple that I, I'm interested in. I do not yet have any questions. Okay, uh, so one is by, by way of review a little bit, Dr. Toledo, um, you mentioned earlier on that there's insufficient knowledge of the ecology and uh, appropriate silvicultural practices. So a wide open question, and I know you sort of covered this, what's really needed? What are the key elements that are needed to, to bring the level up of our knowledge of, of silvicultural practices and basic ecology in these forests? I would say that the economic analysis would play the most important part because in order to promote their management and different interventions, we would first need to be very clear about like what could be the, the real profit made, which would, I, as I mentioned, help to derive also like a appropriate compensatory mechanisms because definitely the low timber volumes, the low price of the timber present in these areas uh, are a bit of like a, an important limitation. So I would say that an economic analysis of the real potential, it's one. And the second it would be, I say, uh, the response, the response to the interventions, because we do not have data in terms of what is uh, the response. There are a few studies, for example, in Costa Rica, in a 30 year old mountain forest uh, <clears throat> thinning, and they found that um, the mortality rates of the remnant trees uh, decrease with the thinning in comparison with the control, but there are very few studies in, in that regard that we would need to, to be able to have more information. Also responses in terms of uh, invasive species, for example, because if you open the canopy, what could happen very easily is that the grasses, climbers, and, and bracken, for example, can just uh, install or invade those areas that were finally being suppressed, uh, this type of vegetation by the canopy cover. No? Yeah, and this is a closely related question, but you, you um, put forth the idea that adaptive management is going to be pretty key here. And so I wonder what you see uh, with your background as the role of, of monitoring and, and specifically what elements would need to be monitored so we have some sense of whether the remaining or, or hopefully increasing cloud forests are uh, in some resilient state. So the, the key part of that is monitoring. What, what is the role of monitoring as you see it? Well, I think it's absolutely key because um, not only in terms of knowing what we have in relation of what has been like the impacts of different uh, of habitat loss, for example, in the in the past and how these forests are recovering. But I think that only by monitoring different processes like uh, recruitment of uh, three species 
of a mature forest or of those more valuable for um, commercial purposes would give us the information that we need. So in order that the management is, a, I would say, a cheaper instead of trying to force uh, taking advantage of the knowledge of, of knowing how these forests respond naturally to different disturbances and also to our intervention, then we would be able to design strategies that are probably more economical. Okay. Yeah, oh, that's, that's a great answer. And we are right up against our time. And I appreciate all the speakers for staying on time and answering our questions, but we're going to mix it up a little bit more after a 10 minute break. And recall that we'll be on a different channel, so to speak. You got a different link uh, for the um, panel discussion. And, and one more time, let's all thank Dr. Turin Toledo for her presentation. So thanks so much for what you've done. And we'll all see you on uh, channel two here in about 10 minutes after a health break.